Next on the news, taking the pulse on the state of affairs, President Biden and French President Emmanuel Macron holding a joint news conference before their state dinner. We lost two pillars of our community. We lost two wonderful people. New details in the gruesome murders of a Louisiana Catholic priest and a missing church employee. Pope Francis will soon be on the move. The Vatican announcing details of the Holy Father's rescheduled trip to Africa. Nice. Plus, children in hospice care. <laughs> Feeling the joy of the season as firefighters take them on sleigh rides. And what could be a silver lining around your wallet this Christmas? New numbers show the economy may be on the mend. I'm Christine Persichetti. Current News starts right now. It's a dinner date that's getting a lot of attention. President Biden and French President Macron will be breaking bread at the White House Thursday night for a lavish affair. It's the first state dinner at the White House since 2019, but that's not exactly what makes this dinner important. The summit between Biden and Macron calls attention to the critical alliance between the two countries. And recently, there's been friction between the two leaders on some geopolitical issues. Ahead of the dinner, they address some of them in a joint news conference today. <laughs> Warm welcomes as the Bidens greet the Macrones outside of the White House. Before President Joe Biden honors French President Emmanuel Macron with the first state dinner of his presidency Thursday night, the two world leaders met in the Oval Office. We are together in challenging times globally and with the war in Ukraine. United when it comes to dealing with Russia's invasion of Ukraine. We're continuing to strong support to the people of Ukraine as they defend their homes and their families and their sovereignty and territorial integrity against Russian aggression, which has been incredibly brutal. I knew Russia was, but I didn't anticipate them being as brutal as they have been. But the two longtime friends are divided on other issues. In particular, Macron has criticized the Buy American provisions of the Inflation Reduction Act. However, today, Biden acknowledged glitches in the clean energy law and tweaks that can be made. The relationship between the longtime allies grew tense last year after Australia abandoned a submarine project with France to partner with the U.S. and U.K. Even if you have a in U.S. an administration which is more uh, multilateral in its approach, you you have issues on the table. We have nine of these dioramas. No tension here, just smiles and conversation as the two first ladies toured D.C. They spoke with students at the interactive museum Planet Word, which is dedicated to how words and language connect people. Getting back to Ukraine, President Biden added that he would be willing to sit down with Russian President Vladimir Putin if he is willing to end the war. Biden and Macron also discussed concerns about China's increasing assertiveness in the Indo-Pacific. There are new developments in the double homicide involving a priest and a church employee in Covington, Louisiana. We first reported yesterday. The second victim has been confirmed as Ruth Pratz. Pratz was a pastoral associate at St. Peter's Church for decades. The confirmation of her death was a devastating blow following the identification earlier this week of the first victim, Father Otis Young Jr. He was the beloved pastor at St. Peter's for about a decade. The bodies of both victims were found burned beyond recognition in an alley behind a warehouse. My dear friends, today we find ourselves in mourning. And with the confirmation of Father Otis's identity earlier this week, and today the confirmation of Ruth Pratt's identity, I share my sincere condolences to their families and to the people of Covington. These are painful and shocking losses for us all. We will often wonder why God chose to take these two of his children at this time in this manner. The coroner says both victims died from blunt force trauma. Police have arrested Antonio Donde Tyson. He faces two counts of first degree murder and second degree kidnapping. Police have not released a motive, but say it doesn't appear Tyson was specifically targeting the victims. Meantime, St. Peter's Church is turning to prayer. We are in a state 
of shock, horror, and disbelief. Father Otis's funeral mass has been scheduled for Monday afternoon at St. Peter's Church. Archbishop Gregory Amon of the Archdiocese of New Orleans will be the celebrant. In New York, a man who violently attacked an Asian woman in Yonkers will now spend close to two decades in prison. Tamil Esco was sentenced to 17 and a half years for stomping, spitting and punching the 67 year old more than 100 times last March in the lobby of her apartment building. Esco pleaded guilty in September to first degree assault as a hate crime. The victim was treated for bleeding on the brain, multiple facial fractures and bruising and lacerations to her head and face. Governor Kathy Hochul is getting heat for vetoing a bipartisan bill that would have fought the fentanyl crisis in New York State. The measure would have created a 16 member fentanyl abuse and overdose prevention task force. Staten Island District Attorney Mike McMahon tweeted that he was baffled as to why Hochul wouldn't support the bill when overdoses are spiking. According to the stats from the state controller, opioid related deaths have increased by 68 percent from 2019 to 2021. Eighty five percent of those deaths were from fentanyl or a similar opioid. If you ride the subway or buses in New York City, get ready. The city may be on track to raise fares. The MTA says because of a massive budget deficit, it's considering raising fares by about 5.5%. That means a single ride would cost you $2.90. The MTA relies heavily on the money we pay to ride public transit, and ridership is only 60% of what it was before the pandemic. Here's some good economic news. There are signs the U.S. economy might be on the upswing. Prices at the pump continue to plunge, and a key measure indicates inflation might be peaking. Gloria Pasmino breaks down what this means for your wallet. Economic relief may be on the horizon. A key measure of consumer prices slowed down in October, according to a report from the Commerce Department released Thursday. It's a sign that inflation may be cooling, and that's good news for your wallet. Prices for things like clothes, television and appliances are going down. That's good news for the holiday season. The Personal Consumption Expenditures Price Index, or PCE, rose 6% in October compared to the previous year. The measure is the Federal Reserve's preferred inflation tracker because it provides a fuller picture of consumer prices. Lower gas prices could could also bring some relief to budget strapped households. According to AAA, a gallon of regular gas is now selling for $3.47 nationally. It's the first week since February. The national average has fallen below $3.50 a gallon. Gas prices are down about $1.52 per gallon since June for a savings of $160 per month for American families with two cars. Chairman Jerome Powell says the Fed could pull back on its pace of aggressive rate hikes as soon as this month, but he's still cautious. We will stay the course until the job is done. Gloria Pasmino, Currents News. The U.S. bishops are speaking out against anti-Semitism across the country. Members of the Committee on Ecumenical and Interreligious Affairs say they're outraged over the growing anti-Semitic rhetoric. They're urging Christians to join them in denouncing hate speech and violence against Jews. A statement reads in part, the rising trend of anti-Semitic incidents has become even more painful in light of the church's relationship to the Jewish tradition and our connections to the Jewish people. The Anti-Defamation League reported 2,717 anti-Semitic attacks in 2021, an increase of 34 percent from 2020. That's the highest number since the group began tracking these crimes in 1979. Pope Francis has rescheduled his trip to Africa. The Holy Father is heading to the Democratic Republic of Congo and South Sudan on January 31st. He'll be there through February 5th. The 85-year-old pontiff was supposed to visit the countries back in July, but was forced to postpone because of his ongoing knee problem. Still ahead, firefighters to the rescue of a different kind. The Slays, they provided one hospice facility for emergency evacuations in the snow, are being used for another reason. Plus, we'll speak with the author of a new children's book who wants kids to understand the true meaning of Christmas. And...
National Eucharistic Campaign, Communicating Through Music. You'll hear more of this beautiful Christmas hymn coming up. King of kings yet Firefighters arriving at one children's facility with their safety in mind, but they're also spreading joy. The children are hospice patients, and the sleds serve a dual purpose for safety and for fun. And on this day, it was all about fun. Marielle Mose has the story from Brooklyn Center, Minnesota. When we saw Brandon and Royce walk up with the box of sleds, we're going, what do they have up their sleeve today? <laughs> In the middle of Tuesday's snowstorm, Brooklyn Center firefighters came by with a special delivery. Hey, hey, hey. Nice. Sleds for kids like Milo to enjoy through the halls of Crescent Cove. <laughs> or for kids like Lauren go, to enjoy Lauren, outside. Go, How often have any of our children at Crescent Cove been able to be in a sled? They don't get to do those everyday things. Katie Lindenfelser, the founder of Crescent Cove, was touched by the generous gift. While the sleds will mostly be used for fun, the firefighters wanted them in each kid's room for life-saving reasons. We were able to be able to move the kids to the sleds. The emergency responders, police, fire, even staff would be able to come around the backside of the building and move them to a safer area. Since most of these kids are wheelchair bound, the sleds would help them escape faster during snowy months in case of emergency. Something complicated can be solved with something very simple like a sled. The Brooklyn Center Walmart donated all the sleds. <laughs> so until the sleds are needed for safety, it's a big smile. They'll just be used for smiles significant to see Milo smile in particular because his brother just died a couple of months ago here at Crescent Cove. And grief can slide to the wayside for a little while. Can you blow kisses? Everything happens in such a beautiful way here. Yeah. <laughs> what a heartwarming story. Firefighters to the rescue in more ways than one. That was Marielle Moe's reporting. The National Eucharistic Revival is preparing Catholics for Advent. The countrywide campaign was started by the U.S. Bishops Conference to help people of faith know the real presence of the Eucharist. Besides offering weekly meditations, they also provided music to help you get in the spirit of the season. Let all mortal flesh keep silence. It's one of the most ancient Catholic hymns dating back to the third century, and it calls us to meditate on the incarnation and on Jesus' Eucharistic presence. We'll play more of that song at the end of this newscast, but if you're interested in learning more about the National Eucharistic Revival and receiving more content just like this, just go to eucharisticrevival.org. If you've already decorated for the holidays like me, your nativity scene is now on display. The origin of the Christmas crush is the basis of a new children's book out now called A Bellwether Christmas. Former journalist and now author Laurel Gillen joins us now to tell us all about it. Hi, Laurel. Hi, Christine. How are all right, you doing? So the first thing I want to hear about is this life changing trip to the Vatican that inspired this book. How meeting Pope John Paul II compel you to start writing this? Well, you know, um, I it was over 20 years ago, and my little grandmother, who was about 80 at the time, had always wanted to go visit Rome and visit Central Italy. And we, we, I found an ecumenical group that was doing a tour of the area, so we went. I really fell in love at that point with the, um, the stories of Francis and his companions, because we went to visit a lot of those sites, Assisi, Laverna, places like that. And uh, I thought that one day I would write a book set in that 13th century time period. I love that. And I love that the characters in the book are actually based off of real animals your son has raised, and you actually call him St. Francis. What influence do you think St. Francis of Assisi had during the 13th century, and, and how is it held up in modern times? Well, I, in a little uh, appendix to the book, I say that 
Francis was like a breath of fresh air. I mean, he was this larger than life character. He, he, you know, the church then was having problems and he was just uh, something different. He, he really embraced poverty. Uh, he embraced peace. He was a peacemaker. He would travel around the, like an itinerant preacher speaking in the Italian vernacular along with his brothers. They were just a, 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 an, incredible, uh, an incredible gift, I think, at that moment in history. All right, I want to read a quote from the book, which is about your main character, Bart the Lamb. It says, now he understood honor and praise, but he was still not sure about love and belonging. How was love a gift? And besides his wool, what gift could a little lamb give to anyone? So how can this book help children understand the true meaning of Christmas? There is a Christmas message here. There really is, you know, a, a message about um, our creator and the kind of sacrifice it took for him to humble himself in, in, into this babe born in a stable. Uh, and that's something, you know, his, his poor and hum, humbleness, uh, humble act is something that uh, Francis, of course, could relate to because he was all about poverty and humility. Hmm. Well, it sounds like a perfect Christmas gift to me. Laurel Gillen, author of A Bellwether Christmas, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Christine. If you'd like to pick up a copy of Laurel Gillen's A Bellwether Christmas, which is geared toward about the fifth grade level, head on over to faithfultext.com. You can get even more Christmas content in this week's tablet. The paper is looking at how the different cultures celebrate. Take a look at the holiday dinner tables around the world. Traditional cuisines such as Nigerian fish stew and Vietnamese spring rolls hand drawn by a member of the tablet staff. You can also read how the different cultures incorporate their faith into Christmas celebrations. Just be sure to pick up a copy of the paper at your local church this weekend. And if you want future editions sent straight to you, just subscribe online at thetablet.org. So to come on Currents News, you can bet these parents will be holding on to their kids for quite some time. The emotional reunion after their children vanished for hours. Plus this. The season of giving is a win-win at Our Lady of the Snows Catholic Academy. I'm Jessica Easthope with their bright Christmas fundraiser that gives back tenfold all year long. Do you have a story idea or want to share a tip? Email us at newstips at desalesmedia.org or call our 24-hour number 718-517-3122. We'll be right back. A Christmas staple in New York City is shining bright. Rockefeller Center tree was lit Wednesday, marking the 90th anniversary of the beloved event in Midtown. The 82-foot Norway spruce from Queensbury, New York, was decorated with 50,000 lights and topped with a crystal star. The tree will be up until January 15th. Three, two, one, here we go! And in our nation's capital, President Joe Biden and First Lady Jill Biden counted down the 100th lighting of the National Christmas Tree Wednesday. The U.S. Marine Band played as the tree was lit on the ellipse near the White House. 58 smaller trees surround the national tree, decorated with ornaments from the 50 states. And the Diocese of Brooklyn is also lighting their own tree. The 28-foot Douglas fir is being covered with 16,000 multicolored lights. And the theme this year is unity, honoring the diversity of the Diocese of Immigrants. The lighting ceremony is sponsored and planned by our parent company, the Sales Media Group. And I'll be hosting the event, so you can come join me on December 14th at 4 p.m. at the Soldiers and Sailors Memorial Arch at Grand Army Plaza. Looking forward to it. Students from Our Lady of the Snows Catholic Academy are pulling together their cash for a cause. They want to make sure that every child has a gift under their tree this year, so they're collecting money to send to the Tablet's Bright Christmas Fund. Current News' Jessica Easthope tells us their donation might come in a bag, but it's from the heart. The ornaments on this tree are more than decoration. They represent the spirit of giving at Our Lady of the Snows Catholic Academy. Each one costs a dollar. It's not a lot, but students give because they know what it's like to receive. It's pretty cool unwrapping that wrapping paper. I want to give that feeling to someone else because 
I want other people to be happy and not sad on Christmas Day. Our Lady of the Snows has been participating in the Tablet's Bright Christmas campaign, helping every kid get a toy for 15 years. Can I get a reindeer and a snowflake? This year, starting on Giving Tuesday, members of the Student Council went from class to class, collecting money and giving out ornaments to decorate and put on the school's Christmas tree. Student Council moderator Liz Flynn says the kids take the lead on the money and the message. We want everyone to feel the love of Jesus at Christmas time and when we do for others, we do for Jesus. We are a witness to Jesus by helping those in need. The school raises around $1,000 for Bright Christmas each year, but last year they got something in return. We start our Bright Christmas ornament sale. Principal Joseph Ventasinque says the $5,000 they received from Bright Christmas was put to good use. It was a gift that we were able to pass back to the families that lost their jobs during the pandemic. They were given a gift um, right after Christmas of a tuition discount or scholarship. And the kids raise money with the same excitement they have on Christmas morning. Right. One, two, three, action. They even made a Bright Christmas commercial to encourage their classmates to give. Set up by the tablet to help those in need during the Christmas season. Some students say they don't take the holiday for granted and want to make others feel just as blessed. Us, we can get whatever we want if we just ask or we have good grades. This way people can get people can get what they would like and everything they need for Christmas. Right before Christmas break, the students will take their ornaments and put them on their trees at home to remind them while they're opening gifts, they helped another kid do the same. In Floral Park, Jessica Easthope, Currents News. That's so great. Last year, the kids managed to donate $733. This year, they're trying to beat that. Feeling inspired? There's still time to help the tablet reach their goal, and they need your help. We have some breaking news. We've gotten our first bright Christmas total so far. The paper has already raised more than $10,000 for kids in need, but they are still a ways away from their goal of $125,000 before Christmas. The need is great this year for families fighting inflation. So here's how you can get involved. Make a check out to the Bright Christmas Fund and mail it to Bright Christmas LB number 2118 P.O. Box 95000. That's in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and the zip code code 19195 or you can make your donation online at the tablet.org slash bright Christmas. A Louisiana family has been reunited after a few hours of pure panic and the happy moment was all caught on camera. Seven-year-old Abigail and her four-year-old sister Cecilia were reported missing in the New Orleans area Monday. A massive five-hour search involving drones, ATVs, and a helicopter ended when a canine officer tracked down the girls. I miss you. <laughs> Both girls were playing with their golden retriever in their front yard when apparently they wandered off. But a happy ending there. And that is Currents News. Before we go, let's listen to our faith in song as we take another look at the ancient hymn, Let All Mortal Flesh Keep Silence. I'm Christine Persichetti. Thank you for joining us because we are putting your faith in the news. Hope to see you again next time. Let all mortal